CERN Large Hadron Collider replacement plans unveiled and here's what it could discover and what it could unleash. This is on the conversation. The Large Hadron Collider LHC at CERN is the most powerful particle accelerator in the world. During its 10 years of operations led to the remarkable discoveries including the long sought after Higgs boson. On January 15, an international team of physicists unveiled the concept design for a new particle accelerator that would dwarf the LHC. It's called the Future Circular Collider, FCC for short. It's uh, conceived as a successor to the LHC, and if given the green light, it would allow physicians to seek answers to some of the greatest mysteries in physics. This includes finding out what the vast majority of the universe is actually made of, or discovering entirely new physics. The proposal envisages a new 100 kilometer circumference tunnel that would be bored through the Earth, encircling the city of Geneva and the surrounding countryside. The 27 kilometer LHC would feed particles into the new collider like a motorway slipway. This would ultimately allow it to collide particles with energies around seven times higher than the LHC can manage. This would let this collider create particles that are beyond the reach of LHC, pushing particle physics deep into an unexplored microcosmic realm, microscopic realm. Now, is this a portal to a dark world? The future circular collider is really several projects in one. The first phase imagines a machine that collides electrons into with their so-called antimatter versions positrons. All particles are thought to have an antimatter companion, virtually identical to itself, but with opposite charge. When a matter and an antimatter particle meet, they completely annihilate each other, with all their energy converted into new particles. The collision energy of such a collision, a collider would be very precisely controlled. Also, collisions would be very clean compared to the LHC, which collides protons, particles that make up the atomic nucleus along with the neutrons. Protons are not fundamental particles like electrons, but haphazard bags of smaller particles, including quarks and gluons. When protons collide, their innards get sprayed all over the place, making it much harder to spot new particles among the debris. The primary goal of the electron-positor collider would be to study the Higgs boson, the particle implicated in the origin of the masses of the other fundamental particles. This new collider would create millions of Higgs bosons and measure their properties in unprecedented detail. Such precision measurements offer numerous possibilities for new discoveries. One of the most tantalizing is the Higgs. The Higgs could act as a portal connecting the world of ordinary atomic matter that we inhabit with a hidden world of particles that are otherwise undetectable. Some 85% of all matter in the universe is dark matter made up of particles we have never been able to see. We only know it exists because of the gravitational pull it has on surrounding matter. Excitingly, an electron positron collider could reveal the Higgs boson decaying into these hidden particles. And in the second phase, the collider would be replaced by a far more powerful proton-proton collider, reaching collisions energies of 100 trillion electron volts. This would be a discovery machine capable of creating a huge range of new particles that physicists suspect may lie beyond the reach of LHC. In particular, it would almost completely explore the energy range where most forms of dark matter are likely to be found. It would also be able to probe the conditions that existed a trillionth of a second before, sorry, after the Big Bang, and this moment in the universe's history is crucial as it is when the Higgs field, an all-pervading energy field that the Higgs boson is a little ripple in, collapsed into this current state, which is what generated the masses of the fundamental particles. Understanding how the Higgs field acquired its current energy is one of the greatest outstanding problems in physics as it appears to be unbelievable, finely tuned to allow atoms and therefore stars, planets and people to exist. As a physicist working on the LHC beauty experiment, I personally hope 
this new collider could eventually also help us solve the riddle of why the universe is made almost entirely from matter and why it's not made from antimatter. Hefty price tag. The first phase of the new collider will come online in the in 2040s after the final run of the upgrade LHC. The more powerful proton proton collider would be installed installed in 2050s. Both projects come with a hefty price tag of 9 billion euros for the electron positron machine and another 15 billion euros for the proton proton collider. This has raised understandable criticism that the money could be better spent elsewhere, for example, in tackling climate change. John Wormersley, a senior physicist involved in the Future Circle Collider, the FCC, told me that beyond the value of fundamental knowledge, in its own right, there will be other significant short-term benefits, he said. The FCC will push the development of innovative technologies to solve new challenges. The World Wide Web, Wi-Fi, and superconducting magnets in MRI machines were all developed to meet the needs of fundamental physics. The project also huge power has power to inspire the next generation of physicists. Ultimately, such an ambitious scheme will only be possible through a large international collaboration with funding from dozens of countries. The project already includes 1,300 contributors from 150 universities, research institutes and industrial partners around the world. And meanwhile, a similar collider project is also being considered in China, perhaps the only country capable of mobilizing the resources necessary to build such a vast machine on its own. The advocates of the future circular collider hope that the project will be adopted in the new European strategy for particle physics to be published in 2020. If accepted, it will begin a long process of research and development, but also of persuading national governments and the public that the exciting fundamental research that could be performed at the collider is worth investing in. The political challenges are undoubtedly enormous, but physicists are determined not to give up the quest for a deeper understanding of our universe. Well, the question posed here by the writer Harry Cliff, particle physicist, University of Cambridge, uh, is why is the universe made up of matter and not made up of antimatter? Well, uh, excuse me, let me put in my two cents in here. He says the riddle of why the universe is made almost entirely from matter and not antimatter. Because that's, uh, that's the, uh, uh, the nature of life, to exist in matter. If we had antimatter, nothing would exist. Matter would not exist. We would have no skies, no, no stars. No sun, no moon, no vegetables, no animals, nothing. No water. What would it be? It would be a nothingness. So that's not the purpose of life, is it? So, I'll leave a link below for you for this on the conversation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.